Hi everybody, this is Ellen. In this video we're going to talk about some string art. Um, I used to love to make this when I was a kid and just kind of recently picked it back up again because it kind of became uh, kind of popular again. Um, this was a sweet little rainbow I put together a little while ago. But I'm just going to show you some different ways to do this. Most times when I see this people are using boards, like actual wood boards with nails to do it. And that, um, although it's really neat and really pretty, it is a little bit more difficult, more time consuming, and, other pe and people think, well, where am I going to get a board from? Where am I going to find the nails? Um, and it just kind of puts you off of doing it because it's not something that you have around the house necessarily, like what um, this one, it is stuff I have around the house that I made this with. So um, I want to show you what I, what I used to make this, and then I'll kind of give you a run through on making one. So to make one of these, you'll want some cardboard cut into the shape that you want. Um, can be squares, rectangles are much easier to cover if um, you're using certain fabrics or papers, but um, usually three or four thick depending on um, your length on your pins because you want them to actually go in and stay there sturdy. Um, I'm using these which are in like the quilting section of these are from Joann's, but I know they're in other stores too. And I always look to make sure that it has the large heads on them. And that's, they're basically perfect for making string art. So I find these. And then you want to have whatever you're going to cover your board with. You can use fabric. You can use paper. And then... You also will want whatever kind of string you're going to use. It can be, um, this is hemp cording, yarn, um, rat tail, and then actual embroidery th thread, like that, or um, rubber bands, since we're, I'm have a lot of rainbow on my channel, I have a lot of rubber bands. You can use these too. And then you will also want um, what you're going to use for your pattern. Patterns can be found um, by looking up either string art patterns or just finding a coloring book page that you can put the dots around the design because that's what I did with this rainbow. It was just, I looked up coloring book rainbow, found the one that I liked, and then I put on the pins so far apart all the way around. The little edges and like around the clouds, I got them a little bit closer so I could have a little bit more of a detail around the edge, but then they were kind of about similar spacing on the rainbow itself. So I mean you can find pictures if you see a picture you like or words you like, bubble letters, um, just google it, find a picture that looks like something that you can use and then put the pins in. So you also want some glue to glue together your cardboard. And scissors if you need those. Scissors. So for the cardboard, I've already cut it to the shape that I want, and then all you do is just start on one spot. This is just craft glue, and you just want to glue them together. Make sure that they're centered. Press them together well. Check to make sure there isn't any glue sticking out. Then you usually let this dry for a little bit just so that it's not, um, it could slide. But I think I'll be okay. For this one I am going to cover it in some fabric because I think that would be fun. But it's the same way if you're going to use fabric or um, paper. Just want to make sure the paper can be cut to shape or the fabric, whatever you're going to use. And then, and then, you can either use glue to just fold one side over. You'd have to let it dry, and you probably want to put a book or something on top of it to hold it down so it stayed 
um, secure, especially on when you do the other side and pull that one over. I like using a stapler just because it's more immediate. I could use a hot glue gun, but then I have to plug it in and wait for it to warm up, and I'm kind of impatient. So I just center it on here, grab one side, take my stapler, staple it down, then I kind of pull it or push it down towards where I have it stapled, grab the other end, pull it over, right across from where I just stapled, and then staple again after I get it pulled tight. And bad staple. So just kind of cross from each other. And I'll do that again. Pick a side. And then staple on the other side. I think it's just... And then you just add a bunch more staples. So we got them across from each other. Uh, later on we'll come back and we'll fill in anything that's not quite tight. So I want to show the other how to do the ends. So have this. So the ends we kind of fold up like a present. If you fold the corners in, fold the corners in, and then just flip it over the end. You just want to tuck in the little pieces. And then staple. My stapler does not like me today. That's okay. That looks pretty good. Do the same thing on the other end. Then you just go back around and staple up any of the parts where they're kind of still a little bit loose. If you look on the back of this one, I added a lot more staples just to kind of make sure that it all stayed fairly tight on the front. So I'll do that. So then you have the back covered. So we flip it over to the front. Then here's where you want to take your coloring book pages. I mean, like this one I said I just would, did circles. So all I did was you take the circles you put or whatever you're using for your design. You want to cut it out as close as you can to the design. So if this was my rainbow I would have cut it out right next to the rainbow rays, right next to the cloud. You just want it to be fairly close but not like right on top of it. And then for me I'm just going to position them around how I want them to be. So I got to put on there the way I want to and then you just simply take your pins find your dots that you marked and then press them down onto your dot and you do that all the way around each piece now it'd be easier to after a while like at first it's like eh no big deal, doesn't, it's not too, um, doesn't hurt the fingers too much at first, but after you've done a couple hundred of them, or less, it does start to kind of irritate your fingers. So using a thimble, if you have one, would be a good idea. And you just want to try and get them so that they're about even when you push them down. I'll show you in a second here. So they're, hold my little down here, about even. You just kind of do that all the way around on each one. So here we have it all finished with all my pins in. Sweet. Now what you want to do is take a scissors. I'm going to just go under my paper. I'm basically going to tear my paper out. So once I get it pulled up a little bit, I'm going to grab it and tear it off. And that's why we cut so close to the design, because that way it should kind of easily perforate itself to take off. Sometimes it might seem like it gets stuck a little bit. Um, usually if you can get like your fingernail in there, 
and lift up the paper a ways. That'll help to, to pull that up. Might need a tweezers or something if you get any, like, if you have any small areas that need to pull the string, the, um, pull the paper out of. Voila. So here we have it with all the pins in. Then you want to grab whichever medium you're going to use, whether it's string or yarn or, um, rubber bands or whatnot. And you'll pick whichever one you're going to work on. Make a knot in the end of your string. Pick a pin. Knot it up. Make another knot in the same spot. That way it is extra secure. And then as far as the tail goes, you can either leave it long and hide it underneath, depending on how full you're going to fill this up. Like on my rainbow that I did for the clouds here. On the right one, I just left the strings hanging. On the left one, I cut them off and then glued the knot to make sure it would stay. So either way, when you're looking at it, you don't see the tail or you don't really see the knot. So it's really up to you on how you want to do that. I'm going to cut this one a little bit. Then, there's tons of different ways to wrap circles. It's really up to you. Um, one of the most basic ways is just kind of going right across from where your starting point is, then coming back next to it on one side, and then coming back across the opposite side, and just basically going all the way around doing that same pattern. Back and forth, next pin over, And then when you get back to your starting point, you can either tie it off right now or, I mean, you could go back around again and fill this up and make it even thicker than it was the first time. So it's kind of even, you fill up the space a little more. Just really depends on how delicate you want it to be. So when you get to the part where you want to stop doing the back and forth for this one, I'm going to push these down a little bit. So they're just a little bit lower. And then, you can either leave it here, tie it off, or like I did on the rainbow here, I gave it a little border on each one. Like you can see at the best one, probably the orange right here. So that it, you can really see the pop, or the difference between the spots. To do one of those, just we want to get the other bands on your pins lower. And then you come back to where you are. You wrap the string around the pin and come to the next pin over. Wrap it around again. And you just keep doing that all the way around. All the way back to the beginning. And what you want to do is make sure you keep that tight and kind of keep pulling on your end here. Because if you're not careful, it will unravel and kind of spin all the way back. I'm going to hold it tight. And then I'm going to kind of pull up to wrap it around again. And you can use a pin or scissors. But I usually just kind of make a little space. Pull my string through. And then pull tight so it knots. And then go ahead, once it's on there secure, then it's a lot easier to make your second knot. Here. And I can hide my tail down in there or I can cut it off right next to it. Then if you use a little bit of glue and push it down on there, it closes up really nice. 
And like on this one, I probably would hide my tail on this end as well. Then you can also push the strings back up towards the top. So they're kind of all right next to each other. So that's how you outline whatever you fill. Um, this one is a very kind of meticulous back and forth design. You can just kind of go crazy with it. Um, I'll just kind of start this one, but here's with yarn. So if I do this one, basically just start kind of randomly going around. You're just filling up your space. It doesn't have to be any particular pattern. Just so you get your space filled up till it looks nice. Go back over the same pins if you want. So this would just be a random filling of all the pins and the spaces. And sometimes I'll finish up and I'll be like, okay, looks pretty good, but like maybe right here I need to um, figure out how to double this up a little bit more. So I'll come back down here and then up here and then over here. So I can fill up that space. without being so like that. It's very pretty, random. It looks good that way. And then of course we have our rubber bands. Like I said, this is a pretty good stretch for these. So you kind of want to be careful how far you pull them eventually they might wiggle your pins out. But I think that you could get some really cute designs and there's so many of these bands that band designs that if you have them it's just something else cute to use them. They look really cute too. So I hope that you'll make some string art. Um, like I said it's a lot of stuff you have laying around your house that hopefully you can use. Um, you might have to look for the pins but again this is what I used. Make sure they had the large heads on them. You can make some really neat stuff and like I kind of envisioned this as being a little flowers but I'll have to kind of work on that to see how I can connect them all together. But I'm in love with my rainbow and this was just made doing the same stuff as this. This was a random pattern. A little outlining but it was a simple coloring book page. So hopefully you guys will give this stuff a try. I think it's awesome. It's super easy. Um, just takes a little bit of time. But not as much time as if you use the wooden nails. I've done that before. Well, it takes a long time and um, a lot more effort, more wrist power. But if you make something, share it with me on my Instagram, which is at Crafting Fantastic. Um, love to see what you come up with. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll have more for you soon.